Hello, I am Robin Cole and welcome to the Satellite Image Deep Learning Podcast. In this episode, I caught up with Marek Kraft to learn about the Deepness QGIS plugin. QGIS is a widely used open source tool for working with geospatial data. It's written in Python and its functionality can be extended with plugins. One plugin that recently caught my attention is Deepness, developed by Marek and his team. Deepness makes it straightforward to use deep learning models in QGIS. You don't need specialized hardware like GPUs, and it offers a range of pre-trained models through a model zoo. As a long-time QGIS user, I was thrilled to discover Deepness, and I believe it has the potential to make deep learning much more accessible to geospatial practitioners without deep learning expertise. Marek shared some fascinating examples of how the plugin is being used and discussed the growing community around it. Note that there's also a demo video showcasing Deepness in action. If you're watching this on YouTube, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It really helps to reach more people and grow the audience. Thank you. Hi, Marek. Welcome to the podcast. Hello, Robin. Nice. Thanks you for, oh, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. So let's begin with where you work and what you do. Okay, so I'm with uh, the Poznan University of Technology in Poznan, Poland, uh, with the Institute of Robotics and Machine Intelligence, where I, where I work mostly on image processing. Uh, back in the day, it was mostly for robotics, but recently we're also into space applications, which obviously includes also Earth observation. So right. that's why I'm here, I suppose. Yes. And uh, what kind of topics of research uh, do you do? Uh, so aside from Earth observation, mostly from drones, uh, also some satellite uh, Earth observation, because we kind of started uh, close to the ground and we're moving up. Mm -hmm. uh, but also space robotics recently, uh, we've been involved in this topic too. So yeah. It's a very cool area. So we connected over Deepness. Do you want to give us a short introduction to Deepness? Okay, so uh, Deepness is essentially uh, a plugin for QGIS software. Uh, if uh, maybe your viewers are not familiar with that package, it's an open source software that is very rich in uh, geographical information system functionalities. And a lot of people use it for different purposes like land management, agriculture, uh, planning, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, our uh, plugin enables the users to use pretty much any typical deep learning uh, neural network. Uh, so detection, uh, regression, segmentation, uh, classification, mm -hmm. uh, and run it from within the software uh, so that it is really nicely available until this common interface that they already know. And they don't really have to have any deep learning expertise. They just can use it, can use it within, uh, I guess, like a few clicks of a mouse button. So. Mm -hmm. uh, very cool. And what was the motivation behind doing this? It actually started as a small project uh, that we needed for our purpose uh, because we were working on assessing the damage that is done by wild animals to some crop. And uh, instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, which is obviously also our first uh, uh, intuition, that, hey, we should do some some kind of interface for that because uh, it will look nicer and we'll have like more control. We'll be able to view the results, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I, th I think that's like engineers first thought that, hey, let's build something. Uh, it was actually the second thought was, hey, maybe that's there's something out there that's available. Maybe we'll integrate with some web services, uh, but that's how we got the, into this piece of software. And it turned out that it's very rich in uh, functionalities. It enables you to do a lot just right out of the box. And it also can be extended fairly easily with Python. And yeah, as a test, uh, one of my colleagues uh, wrote an uh, inference engine uh, that was capable of running from within this software. And it turned out that it works fairly good. Uh, and once we had this basic segmentation pipeline that was you know, uh, fully serviceable from the, within the software, uh, from that, there was really an easy way to extend it and, and add some functionalities. And uh, uh, I know that the guys from our team work on adding things, but we also have a fairly uh, lively community and there's been some contributed functionality too. And pretty much anyone who can train a deep learning model 
and convert this to this common ONNX exchange format uh, and stick to some uh, conventions regarding the output data format, uh, can use this uh, to run their own model and maybe see the results, uh, you know, confront this with like, some background map, maybe edit some results or produce some training data even with this plugin. I think it's a very useful tool and I also fairly excited that kind of enables people that don't have this really, really deep learning expertise to, to, to use this tool to actually do something useful because we have a lot of requests for functionalities and we have some feedback that people were, were using it for some things that we didn't even think, you know, uh, are possible or the tool can be used for that. So it's really nice and encouraging to yeah. do this. That's very cool. Yeah, QGIS is an immensely popular tool written in Python, as you say. Lots of users, both, you know, government, open source, etc. Um, obviously, when we think about machine learning and deep learning in particular, we think about needing powerful computers to run these models. That's true during training. But I think what you've shown is that there's, you don't necessarily need a big, powerful computer just to use the model. And, and that's what you've demonstrated with this plugin, right? Yeah, yeah. Inference can be, um, can be run using... Uh, a lot less resources. It can even run on CPU. It will, will be a bit slower, uh, but generally uh, doesn't really require you to have a very powerful computer. Uh, and if you just want to test drive it, I think that uh, pretty much any modern day PC should be able to handle that. Yeah. And can you tell us a little bit more about ONNX? Uh, so ONNX is basically a common uh, neural network exchange format. Uh, I think that a lot of tools uh, use it uh, like a portable neural network description if you just want to run inference, right? So you're able to import your neural network in uh, pretty much every major framework. I think there's a lot of things that use it uh, kind of like an intermediate format, for example. Uh, if you have some inference engines, for example, for those embedded NVIDIA boards, they often make use of ONNX. There's a lot of tools in the embedded space that use uh, ONNX as a, a exchange format. The nice thing is that it's well documented and uh, a lot of people actually agreed to use it, which is not that common for standards. So, uh, so basically if you use Chex or Keras or TensorFlow or PyTorch, they all have built-in functionalities for converting into this format. So uh, you, your prepared model can be run from within our tool too, thanks to it. Oh, yeah, so that's pretty much it, I guess. Oh, well, that's really cool. So any model being trained anywhere pretty much can be converted to this format. And as long as it complies to the expectations of the output, the input data formats, it's yeah. going to be compatible with your plugin. Really nice. Um, and the tool itself, or it lives on GitHub, right? Yeah, yeah. It's fully open source. Uh, we have a model zoo. So we have quite a few models that you can just download and test drive yourself. We are always looking for some more developers and maintainers because uh, like, like any open source project, it doesn't live without the people that are willing to contribute some time to work on it. Uh, it's also available from the QGIS uh, plugin um, download website. So pretty much if you look for it uh, from within the tool or from, from the website, you can you can just find it. Uh, it's been downloaded over 25,000 times now from this plugin repository. So it's a number we didn't really expect when we started. Uh, yeah, it's really exciting to see where it got us because the amount of things that people would like to use it for range from uh, finding mistletoe in forests or um, flooded terrain uh, after some, some natural disasters or uh, finding wild animals. I recently seen someone develop a, a plugin and model that counts sheep in the field. So not sure if that's for counting insomnia or whatever, but uh, <laughs> I thought it's funny. Like counting sheep, but yeah, but if someone has a need, right, uh, for that and uh, has a UAV that flies over the fields, maybe to check on the inventory of of of, of their of their animals, I can see how this can be useful. And yeah, basically, you have the right tool for that. You have the interface. You have you can 
performance from counting, some spatial analysis, just right off the bat, because you have this whole power of this tool behind you, right? It's not just the inference, but all the things that are associated with QGIS are basically built in, so it's really right. nice. So the predictions are just polygons, and you can just export those in yeah, the yeah, standard yeah, formats. Polygons, yeah. polygons, bounding boxes. You can like do some basic uh, uh, logic analysis. So apply some 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 apply some rules to that, or calculate the areas, or do whatever you want. I, actually, I'm not that much of an expert in this tool. Uh, I always promise myself that I need to learn more. But yeah, generally. Um, uh, we also got really nice reception from the community. Uh, we participated in uh, this QGIS Polish user meeting, uh, and the response was very, very, very nice. Uh, I didn't expect there would be that many people, and that they will have a lot of needs that they would ask us, hey, can you do this? Can you do that? Would that be possible? It's really like completely different experience for what we're used to in magic image processing conferences because. Like I said, we don't even envision what people might try to use the tool for. And there's a lot of unmet needs. And the people are not really aware what kind of power those neural network tools can give them in order to automate or kind of ease their pain with spatial processing. So that's really, really nice. There's a lot to do in this field. Yeah. Seems like you've really identified like a, a good opportunity there with this software that already has broad adoption and just that you know, making it accessible to use the, these most powerful models. So really, really exciting to watch this progress. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, we're going to uh, record a video uh, demo of the of the, uh, of the the tool. That'll be on a separate uh, recording. But for now, yeah. we'll, we'll end this, this episode here. But if people want to follow along deepness, obviously head to GitHub. Uh, do you put out um, announcements anywhere else on sort of uh, updates uh, we usually announce on LinkedIn. Some of it is also announced on my Twitter account. But generally, if you subscribe to notifications on the GitHub or uh, you're a QGIS user, you get notifications of the new version of the plugin. Uh, we're always welcome contact and suggestions on how we can improve that, on what maybe our next model should be. Obviously, we can't do it all. Because uh, like I said, there's a lot of people that are trying to use it and they have a lot of needs. And we're only a few people. This is why we also uh, would welcome some help with the, developing the, 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 the tool very much. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, I guess. Perfect. I'll put all the links in the show notes and hopefully this is sure. encourages sure. people to come and try it out and hopefully contribute as yeah. well. And I'll see yeah. you shortly for the demonstration. Thank you.